Last night, I filmed the first half up until totality of the partial lunar eclipse that happened of November 18th to 19th and it was a freezing cold night so I did not wait from the totality going back to the light. But what I can tell you that was so different about this partial lunar eclipse than all the other eclipses that I photographed and remember I photographed that one very beautiful bright red lunar eclipse over my mom's house and it was just up in the sky not straight up like the one last night but the one was just straight out where your vision was just kind of looking up gazing that was the night of the consecrated night of watching for the Lord's redemption and that's what I just revealed to you but something happened last night well actually the other day when I was revealing that I was reading some passages if you will recall out of the Babylonian Talmud now I don't adhere to that and I have to say that because people come and attack you for reading anything that I, I looked this up because Jesus words were what fulfilled it and that was stating that that was the night of God's consecrated night of watching for the redemption so I was saying that's why Jesus kept saying watch watch couldn't you watch one hour okay so I revealed that the other day and when I was reading those passages it was not only talking about all the trees bl blooming and all it was talking about also Noah's flood it kept mentioning the constellation Kima, and I think I said Kima, Kima, so I didn't know what that was. So after I finished the video, I was looking up what is the constellation Kima, and, or Kima, and it turns out it's the Pleiades. Well, I didn't, that was like two days ago when I posted that, and I didn't know at that time that with this partial lunar eclipse, the constellation that was showing up to the right of the moon was the Pleiades known as seven sisters seven sisters seven stars showing up to this lunar eclipse and we know that the lunar eclipses have to do with Israel and what's going to happen soon in the future with them thought that that was completely unbelievable that the Pleiades the seven sisters were shining to the right of the moon last night now because I was not out in a dark field or anything I could not see the stars so I wasn't able to film it and I looked for it but they are a cluster of seven stars that shine brightly and they're called the seven sisters in right at the time of the seven-year Laudato Si socialist CC plan of the Pope and the globalists as well as the start of the seven-year Shemitah cycle as well as Pastor Mark Bilt saying that the tribulation would start at the beginning of a seven-year cycle of the Shemitah and here we had a lunar eclipse which speaks to Israel and it also speaks to the Pleiades, the seven sisters, and the sevens all coming to pass. And all of these signs of the number seven in the sky and with things on earth. So what I find fascinating, and before I show you my clips of the lunar eclipse last night that was partial, and I got to the point of the totality, except there was a little tiny bit left. As we know, there was not going to be a full lunar eclipse. So I'm going to show it to you. But this is incredible because 
I didn't know what Kima or Kima constellation was till I looked it up two nights ago, but that was the constellation that showed up last night near the moon. Now, in a very bizarre uh, eclipse that happened last night, it wasn't bright red, it wasn't dull red, it was black. The entire eclipse was black. There might have been one moment where I saw a slight tinge of red, but not like over my house on Passover night, the night of watching for the redemption in 2014. That one was very clear, very bright, very bright red and beautiful. And this one last night, it got more and more dark, black till the moon just disappeared into the black sky. And that to me is a very major sign. Now, remember the Lord spoke about the Pleiades in the Bible. And in Amos 5, this is really interesting because he was um, prophesying. And listen to the titles that are in Amos 5. A Lament for Israel, A Call to Repentance, and The Day of the Lord are mentioned in this passage with the Pleiades. This is Amos 5 verse 1 and this is what happened when Amos was prophesying back then to Israel. Hear this word which I take up against you, a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel has fallen, she will rise no more. She lies forsaken on her land. There is no one to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that goes out by a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which goes out by a hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. Now then he gives a call to repentance. And here it is that he's mentioning the Pleiades. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live, but do not seek Bethel, nor enter Gilgal nor pass over Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, with no one to quench it in Bethel. You who turn justice to wormwood and lay righteousness to rest in the earth. He made the Pleiades and Orion. He turns the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark as night. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. So therein brings the Pleiades in with the flood of Noah. The Lord is his name. He rains ruin upon the strong so that fury comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who rebukes in the gate and they abhor the one who speaks uprightly. Therefore, because you tread down the poor and take grain taxes from him, you know, and this implementation of this huge tax global bill just is past the infrastructure bill. Here, though you have built houses of hewn stone, you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine from them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins, afflicting the just and taking bribes, diverting the poor from justice at the gate. Therefore the prudent keep silent at that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you. As you have spoken, hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gate, it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. So now it goes from mentioning the Pleiades to the day of the Lord after it tells Israel to repent. And the lunar eclipses are a sign for Israel. Then it moves to the day of the Lord after mentioning the Pleiades. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, there shall be wailing in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, they shall call the farmer to mourning, and skillful lamenters to wailing, 
In all vineyards there shall be wailing, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, for what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? And that partial lunar eclipse was very dark. It was not red. It was not blood red. It was dark and it was black and almost completely, I mean, it just completely disappeared into the dark sky that was completely black with no stars. And the Pleiades was to its right. He says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Now this was at that time when they were doing things against the Lord. Not a forever thing. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fattened peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. But let justice run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? You also carried Sikuth, your king, and Chiun, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. The seven sisters showed up in the sky with the lunar eclipse, which is a warning to Israel. And this is what it says in Amos. <laughs> a lament for Israel, a call to repentance, and finally, the day of the Lord. And I just had told you in my video how I was revealing from Jesus' words that that night of watching for the redemption, where Jesus told the disciples, could you not watch one hour, that was when they came and took him out as a thief, and... Jesus said the hour had come. Nobody had known what hour that was going to happen or that it was going to happen. But they took him out a certain hour. He said that the hour had come and that it was a night of darkness. This lunar eclipse was so dark. It was really disappointing to me because I had filmed four other eclipses and the very first one, the very night of the consecrated night of watching for the redemption, which is the first night of Passover week, that Jesus said, watch, is the time we are to be watching for the Lord to appear. Because the Jewish people have in their record that that is the night that the Messiah will appear. And that's incidentally after... Um, during the Passover Seder that you go open up the door and welcome Elijah in, which is one of the two witnesses. So they're going to come and they're going to give the last gospel message and then God's wrath is going to be poured out after they're slain and taken up three days later. Now listen to this next scripture in Job 9 where it's mentioned about the Pleiades. Then Job answered and said, Truly I know it is so, but how can a man be righteous before God? If one wished to contend with him, he could not answer him one time out of a thousand. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him and prospered. He removes the mountains and they do not know. When he overturns them in his anger, he shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. He commands the sun, and it does not rise. He seals off the stars. He alone spreads out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Now, isn't that what he did on the Sea of Galilee? He was walking on the waves of the sea. 
Now I just learned about the Big Dipper being called the Bear. And this says, he made the Bear, Orion, and the Pleiades, that's the Seven Sisters, and the Chambers of the South. He does great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without number. If he goes by me, I do not see him. If he moves past, I do not perceive him. If he takes away, who can hinder him? Who can say to him, what are you doing? God will not withdraw his anger. The allies of the proud lie prostrate beneath him. How then can I answer him and choose my words to reason with him? For though I were righteous, I could not answer him. I would beg mercy of my judge if I called and he answered me. I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. For he crushes me with a tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to catch my breath, but fills me with bitterness. It is a matter of strength, indeed, he is strong. And if of justice, who will appoint my day in court? Though I were righteous, my own mouth would condemn me. Though I were blameless, it would prove me perverse. I am blameless, yet I do not know myself. I despise my life. It is all one thing. Therefore, I say he destroys the blameless and the wicked. If the scourge slays, suddenly he laughs in the plight of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of its judges. If it is not he, who else could it be? Now my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away. They see no good. They pass by like swift ships, like an eagle swooping on its prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad face and wear a smile. I am afraid of all my sufferings. I know that you will not hold me innocent. If I am condemned, why then do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow water and cleanse my hands with soap, yet you will plunge me into the pit and my own clothes will abhor me. For he is not a man as I am, that I may answer him and that we should go to court together. Nor is there any mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and do not let dread of him terrify me. Then I would speak and not fear him, but it is not so with me. So the Pleiades was mentioned there in Job 9, verse 9. Now the next place that the Pleiades is mentioned is Job 38. This is where the Lord reveals his omnipotence to Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements, surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it, to what were its foundations fastened, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, then I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors when I said, this far you may come, but no farther, and here your proud waves must stop. So God causes the tides to only go so far and not any farther. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it may take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment from the wicked. Their light is withheld and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea or have you walked in search of the depths? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light. 
Jesus is the way. And darkness, where is its place? That you may take it to its territory, that you may know the paths to its home. Do you know it because you were born then or because the number of your days is great? Have you entered the treasury of snow? Or have you seen the treasury of hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? By what way is light diffused, or the east wind scattered over the earth? Who has divided a channel for the overflowing water, or a path for the thunderbolt, to cause it to rain on a land where there is no one? a wilderness in which there is no man to satisfy the desolate waste and cause to spring forth the growth of tender grass. Has the rain a father, or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice and the frost of heaven? Who gives it birth? The waters harden like stone, and the surface of the deep is frozen. Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades? Or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Mazaroth in its season? Or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? And maybe the cubs are the three stars after the Big Dipper is the body of the, the bear. Is maybe the mother bear and the three stars are the cubs. Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Can you lift up your voice to the clouds that an abundance of water may cover you? Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, Here we are. Who has put wisdom in the mind or who has given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds by wisdom or who can pour out the bottles of heaven when the dust hardens in clumps and the clods cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lurk in their lairs to lie in wait? Who provides food for the raven when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? So in all those passages, the Lord mentions the Pleiades, which appeared last night to the right of the lunar eclipse that is a sign for Israel. To me, the passage in Amos is very clear that it's a call of warning to Israel for the leaders that are doing corrupt things. It's a call against this global governance. It's a call against all of the wickedness that's being set up. And the time of seven years is clearly represented in the seven stars of the Pleiades. And what I happen to be revealing about the first night of Passover being the consecrated night for watching, and I was reading some of the text stating that the Exodus, as it was recorded, now the Talmud is what has that record in it as well. Now one of their rabbis, Malakowski, ultimately concludes that Kima, or Kima, is indeed the Pleiades. The JPS translation of the Bible associated Kima with the Pleiades. Lazarus Goldschmidt, who died in 1950, who translated the Talmud into German, uses the word, uses the word C. Bengestern, or the seven stars, which is Pleiades. Interesting thing, just uh, pondering. It's known as M45. Now we had a president that was 45. Does this have something to do with the fact that somehow he's going to play a role in the time of Jacob's trouble or leading up to it? This is kind of interesting because it has to do with the time of planting. And it says, in a report from last January, they wrote that wheat, the major winter grain, and barley are planted at the beginning of October until the end of November, which is close to Sofot's opinion that the planting ends in Tevet. So clearly the time of the appearance of the Kima or the Pleiades 
where it's shining really brightly in the sky, um, that was the time of planting, and that was when they would plant the wheat in October through the end of November. Sometimes they said it might go into December. Now, there was a little article, um, this was Discoveries and Revelation Blogspot.com. This was written Sunday, July 12th of 2015. And it says, stars Kima and Kessel and constellation and God's purpose of stars to stare a apocalyptic event. And it says, through stars in earth to cause a flood. It says, the biblical reference from the book of Job chapter 9, paragraph 9, that I just read to you, where the stars were mentioned by name, were Kima, was a key for the apocalyptic event to take place. Kima happened to be related, symbolically meaning a reference of cold, and Kima, the winter, for representing the cold. These two stars were struck where in the Dino River, like two corks, and when God extracted them, the heavens opened up and the great flood began to rain in the earth. The great flood consisted of boiling water, which fell from the Dino River, or river of fire. The story named Kima as the great flood. And it says, For when the Holy One, blessed be he, wanted to bring a flood upon the world, God took two stars from Kima and brought a flood upon the world. And when he wanted to fill in the gap, he took two stars from Aish and filled up. But let God return Kima's to her. A pit can't filled with its own earth. A beautiful story that begins with an apocalyptic event. Kima is identified as the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, and it had something to do with what God did to bring about the flood of Noah. And this is what is appearing in the sky next to this partial lunar eclipse. <laughs> Signs of an apocalyptic event. Interesting, this is the earth will be destroyed by fire and it is representative fire as well with warnings from Amos to Israel warnings for repentance because the day of the Lord is coming and I reveal to you the consecrated night of watching is the first night of Passover when Jesus told the disciples to watch could you not watch one hour and then the hour had come and then it was a time of darkness and I have always thought that the rapture would happen at Rosh Hashanah, at Feast of Trumpets, when the last trump is blown. But I have told, um, you know, we've gone through these various feasts and various people, including myself, have written about how Passover was a possibility. We've uh, written about how Shavuot was a possibility for the rapture. But seeing this revelation of the night of darkness that's consecrated by God, and then Jesus said to watch on that night, are all signs that the appearing of the Messiah that is written in the Jewish books, that the Messiah will appear on that specific night, the first night of Passover, when God took them out of Egypt is a very interesting biblical scriptural definition of when we should watch for the Lord's appearing for the Messiah appearing and now with these signs in the sky having to do with Israel with a lunar eclipse and telling her to repent and then saying the day of the Lord is coming soon and, in, and then we have the signs of the seven in three different events and showing that connection to fire and that is how the earth is going to be cleansed the second time first time by the flood of Noah so it's going to be like the days of Noah when he returns and that is a sign of Noah's flood 
all of this just comes together. So I just wanted to share those things with you and show you those clips of the very dark, non-red partial lunar eclipse last night. And I wanted to share all of these facts with you and scriptures with you to show you that more stuff is developing and being shown and being revealed and this is really stunning information. So um, I hope you enjoyed the clips that I took. This Kima or Kima constellation being Pleiades represents the cold and now when you get online and you see the news this morning it says that they have no heat in Belarus because the Russians have cut off the gas to them and that they're going to have a cold dark winter and didn't Joe Biden already forecast that because his plan includes those very things of getting rid of the things that heat your home and keep your car running on gas so it's a very perilous time and this shows that we're in the end times and these things are revealing more about the end times with the scriptures connecting with these things like nothing we've ever seen before so i don't want to make this video really long um, I just had to get this information to you in enough time to tell it in. So anyway, ponder what just happened and ponder the fact that these things represent certain things. And I just read that thing about the constellation Kima or Kima when I was talking about Passover night being the night of watching. And I don't think that was coincidence because I had no idea the Pleiades was supposed to show up, the seven sisters, the seven stars, with this particular lunar eclipse. So that's really stunning. I hope you enjoyed the footage that I took.
blood moon did not turn red it was black and then it just disappeared and now the whole sky is just black and I don't even know where it is because it's disappeared very strange this was the least red blood moon I've ever seen November 18th to 19th 2021 and also the Pleiades is supposed to be showing up to the right of the moon and I just talked about Kima or Kima in Hebrew that's speaking of the Pleiades and I talked about that in connection with the coming night of watching the first night of Passover and the moon is in totality right now and I can't see it and it's freezing so I'm going to go inside I hope you enjoyed this video at least of what I could capture it was really um, not red at all very dark so what did you think about the lunar eclipse that happened last night? Wasn't it dark? You think the darkness of that lunar eclipse was not a sign of something that dark times are coming and the appearing of the Messiah is so soon and then the day of the Lord is coming and Amos is warning Israel, uh, the prophet saying, you know, repent and accept the king these are things to ponder and i'm going to sign off i hope you enjoyed this video